Hey crystal lovers, Ashley here with the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy and I am so excited to share some of my favorite crystals for Pisces season. So I hope that you are excited to learn a little bit about the crystals that you can work with the, during this time, what energies to expect along the way because there are so many things that we need to be aware of in this very watery energy season. So Pisces season is here. Um, this astrological season really offers us the opportunity to embrace a lot more creativity and compassion with the help of our crystals. So as we dive into this season, which goes from about February 20th until about March 20th, the focus really shifts a lot from the previous season, which was Aquarius, um, which was focused a lot more on community and stuff like that. It focuses to uh, turning inward and focusing on your spirituality, your spiritual connection. This is a time for creating space for a lot of inner reflection um, and doing a little bit of soul searching, which will be really, really rewarding right now. So after Aquarius, where that community and connection and communication was really key, you'll find that Pisces um, really kind of shifts the energy and it's about uh, this connection with the water element, which is known for heightening our intuition, our emotions, and this can be really productive for air, water, and earth signs, especially those people who are really in touch with their intuition, their intuitive side, but fire signs might find this time a little bit challenging as it can bring some um, shadow aspects to the surface, things that just need to be dealt with that maybe we haven't addressed yet. So important to keep that in mind. So during this season, if you work with some really Pisces aligned crystals, it will help align you with the current celestial energies. So it's an excellent way to enhance the positive aspects of this astrological phase while balancing out its challenges, which is really important. So before we dig into the specific crystals that I would recommend that you work with at this time, I want to touch on some Pisces correspondences. So I talked about the dates for Pisces season, February 20th through March 20th, and Pisces, it's symbol in the zodiac is two fish swimming in opposite directions and they're usually connected by some sort of cord or rope so they're sort of going round and round the ruling planet of pisces is neptune which we're going to talk a little bit more about later um, and pisces is a mutable sign meaning that this is um especially people who this is their sun sign, but even during this season, it's all about being open to change. It's about adaptation, intuition, acceptance, but also growth. Pisces is related to the water element. So I talked about how this has a deep um, connection with our intuition, with emotions, and I have a great blog over on my website at loveandlightschool.com all about working with crystals for the different elemental energies. So if you really want to lean into that water element energy, head over to loveandlightschool.com and you can check out a little bit more about how to do that. Um, the parts of the body that Pisces is, so, is associated with uh, are mainly the feet, so ankles, heels, and toes, and this is all about change and influence. Again, that adaptation, that ability to go with the flow. There are some great gifts that Pisces season brings us. It brings us creativity, compassion, generosity, kindness, romance, and wellness, but it also, like all zodiac seasons, all astrological seasons, comes with its challenges. So the Pisces season challenges are emotional volatility, insecurity, and reactivity. So it's good just to be sort of aware and remember the crystals that I'm going to recommend for this season are really rooted in helping us lean into the more positive aspects of this season and help us work through some of those challenges. So during Pisces season, you want to select crystals that really amplify your connection with empathy, uh, creativity, connection, and it's important uh, just to note here 
that the zodiac season crystals are a little bit different than birthstones. Birthstones go by the calendar month, and although they really overlap a lot with our zodiac crystals, they are a little bit different. And I have an article linked from this week's blog post about Pisces season, again, over on the website, and you can find the link for that in the description here on this video, so definitely go check it out. So here are the crystals that I would recommend that you work with during this celestial season to help you sort of stay in balance and flow. First, and I have examples of all of them that I've brought along, first is Afghanite, which is this beautiful deep blue stone that comes from Afghanistan. This one is just a small tumbled stone. You can find it in terminated crystals, um, but this one is really good for release, letting go, going with the flow. So uh, one that I really enjoy. Then there is Blue Lace Agate. Blue Lace Agate, one of my favorite crystals for calming and soothing. It has such a tender energy. And I normally think of any type of agate being great for creativity, for creative energy. The way that the layers and bands in the agate sort of flow together helps us um, find our creative freedom, our creative inspiration. It helps us sort of take the twists and turns along the creative journey that we need to take. And blue lace agate in particular a really good fit for this season. Then we have Amazonite. Amazonite, another great stone for connecting with that sense of inner peace, of calm, um, and it really helps us speak from the heart. So this is about sort of getting really real and honest. Remember I said Pisces season, a great time for some of that inner work. So Amazonite is an excellent companion for some of that deeper sort of spiritual journey work. Uh, we also have amethyst, and amethyst happens to be the February birthstone. So it is the stone that sort of overlaps with um, the zodiac stone coming from Pisces. This is a really cool piece from Brazil. It's sometimes called a snowball amethyst because of these little mineral inclusions that look like little snowballs. But amethyst itself is a really watery energy stone. It's sort of water and air, um, but it brings in that connection with intuition, inner guidance. And so if you have an amethyst crystal to work with, especially if you were born in the month of February and it's also your birthstone, um, this can be a really good one for you to work with at this time. There's also aquamarine, and I love a bright blue aquamarine. This is the blue variety of barrel. This piece is from Brazil, um, and aquamarine is another great stone for release. It's also excellent for connecting with that water element. It's named for the blue ocean, the blue sea, so it has that connection with the water element. It's also really good for washing away things that are no longer serving us. So as we start to, you know, make these discoveries and connections um, that from our deep dive inner work, Aquamarine helps us see, you know, what it's time to sort of let go of in this season. There's also Blue Aventurine, Blue Aventurine. So a lot of people don't know Aventurine comes in lots of colors, not just the very common green that we're all used to seeing. Uh, you will see it in um, yellow, in red, in pink, in white, in orange, and it also comes in this beautiful deep dark blue. This piece is from India. A lot of people get it confused with Dumortierite or with blue quartz, but the Aventurine does have those tiny little flecks and sparkles of mica in it, so it works um, great for that reflection, right? That self-reflection, that inner work. All of those little bits of mica that are in there are like tiny mirrors, um, sort of holding that, that crystal up in front of us to see what's going on inside. So blue aventurine, excellent for this season as well. There's also bloodstone. 
Bloodstone is such an underrated crystal. It has that beautiful deep green with the little spots of red. And this is a really earthy stone. So if you find that you are uh, emotionally overwhelmed in this season, if that water element energy, that Pisces energy is hitting you pretty hard, Bloodstone is a great way to help get grounded and centered, to work through those emotions in a way that's really healthy, to feel them fully, to express them, to release them in a way um, that, you know, doesn't hold anything back, that doesn't prevent you from feeling into what you're feeling, whether it's grief or rage or sadness or frustration uh, or overwhelm, like it's okay. All emotions are part of the human experience, but bloodstone helps you sort of ground through those difficult periods, um, especially when things are so up in the air with the Piscean energy. So there's also Caribbean blue calcite which has you know sort of become a, a big favorite in the past couple years for a lot of people it also has this sort of um layered flowing energy like it feels like sort of floating in a quickly moving stream so it allows you to when you are feeling stuck or uncertain to sort of just take a step back and let the current take you where it will until you can figure things out because sometimes it's okay to not always be doing 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 deciding deciding sometimes it's okay just to see where things take you uh, and and just embody that acceptance and sometimes we need that acceptance which is incredibly difficult when things are hard right but sometimes we're just too exhausted or overwhelmed to make a solid decision and move forward so that's where caribbean blue calcite can be a great companion there's also white calcite this is a beautiful piece from mexico so we have this great white calcite cluster with those glenohedral crystals that sometimes are called dog tooth calcite. Um, but this is about finding that clarity, uh, finding that clarity within yourself, evaluating why you do certain things, why you move into particular patterns, particularly as it relates to your emotional states, right? How you deal with your emotions, how you work through them. Uh, but it also reminds us that we are just part of a whole which I think is really important, um, that we don't exist on our own. Sometimes when we do the inner work, it can feel isolating and lonely. And Clear Calcite reminds us that we can do that inner work and still be part of community, still find healing in community, still reach out for support where we need it. So reminding us that even when we're doing that inner work, we don't have to be isolated. We don't have to do things on our own. Um, we can reach out for that community care. There's also Chrysocolla, which is um, sort of an earth and water element stone. This is a little botrytal piece. So it has a bubble-like formation and it almost has like a waxy appearance. Um, and this sort of reminds us to bring a little bit of lightness into the season. Chrysocolla is a really nurturing stone. It's really supportive. It's a stone that I think in a lot of ways just makes us feel held and sort of bears witness to whatever we're going through. And during this really emotional time, it's nice to have that feeling of nurturing. And I think another great thing about Chrysocolla is it reminds us that our crystals are not just tools, our crystals are there for us to build relationship with and work collaboratively with. So it's about finding the spirit within our, our stones um, to create that deeper connection that will support us personally. There's also Indigo Gabbro, which is sometimes sold under the name Mystic Merlinite, which is a trademark name. Um, this is a beautiful gabbro that comes from Madagascar. It does have often these little patches of sort of a shimmery, uh, dark, you can see that spot right there. So again, another stone for that reflection, acting like little mirrors. 
but it's also about sort of willingly journeying into that shadow space and seeing um, what needs our love, which parts of ourselves need to be acknowledged, need to be held, need to be loved, need to be accepted, not necessarily fixed. I think a lot of people sometimes think about shadow work as something that we're fixing these like bad parts of ourselves. And it's not about that. It's about embracing ourselves in wholeness. And understanding that, you know, so many of us are constantly pushing for these levels of perfection or putting so much pressure on ourselves. And this is just about meeting us where we are, accepting the whole of ourselves with all of our faults, our flaws, our things that we have, right, our wounds, and just holding space for that and being okay that we're in that process of healing. There's also... Garnierite, which a lot of people um, call green moonstone, and really it's the Garnierite that gives the green moonstone the green color. But I have here some Garnierite with Druzy quartz from Indonesia. And this is a really beautiful piece. This is pretty uncommon to find it like this. A lot of times you'll find it more um, polished uh, from Madagascar. But Garnierite is about helping us connect with the earth, connect with nature. Sometimes this watery energy that comes in in Pisces is a little bit overwhelming. It's a little bit much. Think about a, a fast moving current that could sort of sweep you off your feet. Garnierite is about really rooting into the earth, planting your feet firmly, feeling that solid foundation under you so you can sort of weather the emotional storm that often comes with Pis Pisces season. Next, there's blue kyanite. And I have this beautiful new find. It's an aqua blue kyanite that comes from Tanzania. It's a lot lighter and brighter in color than most of the kyanite that comes from India or Brazil. Um, and overall, kyanite is great for cleansing energy and it's really helpful for release. You can use your blue kyanite similar to how you would use a selenite wand to sort of sweep or comb through your aura, your energy body to help facilitate a quick release. And it's a great crystal for just balancing your energy. So if you're just feeling like you're on a little bit of a roller coaster, Kyanite is an excellent companion to help you sort of level things out and find that sense of balance again. That brings us to Laramar. This is one of my favorite crystals because it really looks like the ocean. It looks like water. And so thinking about watery, soft Pisces, um, I love the idea of working with Laramar, which is also known as dolphin stone. That's one of the sort of nicknames for Laramar. It's a blue variety of pectolite, and it only comes from the Dominican Republic. And so Laramar reminds us to communicate, right? Sometimes when we get overwhelmed by emotion, uh, depending on like what our personal patterns are, what our past traumas are, we sometimes go into patterns where we'll shut down or maybe we lash out. And Laramar is about um, positive communication and clear communication. So reminding us not to get stuck in those heavy uh, emotional patterns where we aren't dealing with things well. And this may even be about communicating to ask for that support and that community care. So Laramar can be a great companion for doing that work. Um, then there's Rainbow Moonstone and I have a piece here from India. This is a an incredibly flashy, vibrant blue moonstone, um, blue flash rainbow moonstone, I should say. And this is an excellent crystal for helping us find balance and just acknowledge and recognize cycles in our lives. So it is not uncommon to have periods where we feel a bit ungrounded, a bit uncertain, a bit unsure about where things are taking us. I think um, I think so many of us feel that right now. Things feel uncertain in the world. Uh, things that we took for granted, things that we thought we could rely on are maybe changing and changing rapidly. Maybe we've had a little 
crisis of consciousness. Maybe we've lost faith or hope in so many ways. And Rainbow Moonstone can be really good in helping you reconnect to those feelings of humanity and, and recognizing that all things happen in cycles. Um, and that even when we feel like we are at that lowest of low places, that nothing is permanent. And so things will always change again. So it gives us that, that little bit of hope, um, which I think many of us can use right now. There's also White Moonstone, which doesn't have that same blue flash. This piece is from India, um, but it does have sort of a silvery flash. This really connects with the moon, which is also associated with the water element, with intuition, with emotion, and really sort of uh, leans heavily into that Piscean energy. So if you need to do a little work reminding yourself that um, we are all connected to that sort of cosmic whole, then White Moonstone can be a good companion. It also has, again, a very nurturing, supportive energy that can just feel, uh, create some more feelings of security and safety when you're working with it. There's also Black Obsidian. Black Obsidian, not a stone we would typically consider to be associated with Pisces. Um, it's, it's usually thought of as a very fiery energy stone because it's created through volcanic activity, but Black Obsidian is great for scrying divination. It is often polished into mirrors. So again, for that self-reflection piece, especially for the shadow work that often sort of happens during this time, um, Black Obsidian is really excellent. I think also sometimes when we're dealing with a lot of emotion, we can often sort of lose ourselves. We start to question um question things about our identity, about how, the way that we view our role in the world, and Black Obsidian is a great truth revealer. So it's a good reminder of who you are at your core outside of maybe some of the artificial or uh, social labels that get placed on us uh, in society. There's also boulder opal and i just have a really small little piece of boulder opal here this is from australia um, and it does have a really nice blue sparkly flash and it's in an iron stone matrix so this is interesting so opal gets a lot of that flash from added water molecules and so it has this sort of aqueous um uh, watery energy to it already, but it's really grounded out with that ironstone. And that's why specifically, I feel like Boulder Opal is such a great um, companion for Pisces season, because it takes all of that emotional energy and helps it sort of settle and sink down. That ironstone matrix helps us get into our body and sort of feel into where those emotions are impacting us on a physical level, in our physical body. So often we think of the emotions as just being in our head space or in our heart space, but really they can influence us uh, in a pretty deep physical way. So um, if that's something you're struggling with, you need to just bring a little bit more awareness to maybe how you're being impacted, then Boulder Opal can be really, really useful. Next we have Pearl. And both black pearl and white pearl are great for Pisces season. So here I have a black pearl and here is a white pearl. And pearl is created, of course, in an oyster shell. The um, oyster is exposed to some sort of irritant, builds up layers of knacker, and there are, you know, freshwater pearls, there are um, saltwater pearls, there are farmed pearls and natural pearls, and it's a whole thing. Uh, but you can usually find some cultivated freshwater pearls for pretty inexpensive, um, but they're, they're all a little bit different. You can also find natural pearls, which are really nice, uh, kind of a real treat. But the black pearl and the white pearl, um, I think give us these different depths of uh, emotional connection and emotional processing so really helping us work through things on a deep level 
understand why are we feeling the way we're feeling, not just acknowledging our feelings, which is important, but having an awareness and understanding of where those things are coming from. So these are absolutely amazing. Uh, if you are lucky enough to work with them, there are a lot of fake pearls on the market, so you do need to be careful about that. Um, but these are, these are great. Then there's Aqua Aura Quartz. Now I know everyone feels a little bit different about working with Aura Quartz. Um, so this is a natural clear quartz crystal that is then coated with a very, very thin layer, like a couple microns thick of precious metals. That's how all Aura Quartz is made. The Aqua Aura Quartz um, specifically is made with gold molecules. So the quartz is put into a vacuum chamber, vaporized precious metals are pumped in, they molecularly bond or adhere to the surface of the quartz, they can't be scratched off or rubbed off. Uh, so it is a, you know, created by humans, basically, you won't find this in nature. But there's actually a lot of fakes for aura quartz as well, where they use Teflon or plastics to give a similar appearance. You can usually spot those because they'll look really slick and wet, almost a little sticky. Um, and the coating looks very thick and that's because it is. Uh, it's not this thin, just sort of iridescence. But aqua aura quartz, because it's created with gold, really reminds us to stand in our power during this time. Uh, I think it's important even when we are feeling deep emotions to remember at the core of ourselves that we are so powerful and we can create so much change and we can have so much positive impact on the world. And so Aqua Aura Quartz really sort of gets to the core of that um, and yeah, is, is a great support. So a good one for this season. And I have two more, and then we're gonna talk about a couple other great things for Pisces season, but my two other recommended crystals are selenite with all the heavy emotional energy, really good for some regular clearing or cleansing. So just combing through or sweeping through your aura. I usually like to go from my head down toward my feet and sort of close my eyes, take a deep breath, and hold intention to sweep or remove any negative energy. You can even exhale as you do that to sort of signal that release to your body. Um, really, really helpful and just sort of go through all sides of your body. And Oh, that feels so nice. So uh, a selenite wand is great. It doesn't have to be long like this, a little piece, totally fine. That will work great. Um, but also because selenite is also connected with the moon, named for the moon goddess Selene. So we have again this uh, method of cleansing and release with this crystal, this companion, um, that's also deeply aligned with the energy of emotion and intuition that's happening during Pisces season. So this is a really good friend for this astrological season. And then finally, we have one that is so special. It's one of my favorites, um, and that is indicolite. Indicolite, sometimes spelled indigolite, like indigo light. And this is blue tourmaline. And I'm wondering if I can sort of light it up a little bit so you can see how blue it is. There you go. Um, so sometimes they look uh, almost black when you're just sort of looking at them in natural light, if you hold them up to the sunlight, you can often see, or a flashlight, you can often see that color. So there is the beautiful blue indicolite tourmaline. And uh, I often find that striated crystals, any type of striated crystals, but tourmaline, selenite, kyanite, things like that, they have a way of sort of speeding things up. So if you're in a difficult season, as Pisces season can often be, it sort of has a way to help bring things to a head. So if you've been feeling stuck, if you're feeling like overwhelmed, you just want to get to the part where you can take the next step, sometimes working with Indicolite is helpful because it brings that insight, that clarity of the next steps that you might need to take. So this is a phenomenal crystal to work with for that. 
Um, so, <laughs> uh, in terms of my top three, because I know this was a really big list of crystals, right? If I had to pick three, I would pick Amazonite, Aqua Aura Quartz, and Laramar for my Pisces season companions. So let's start with Amazonite and do just a little bit more of a deep dive into this crystal because, um, yeah, I just want to give you some more information. So this stone really carries the energy of the water element. It helps, helps you tap into your emotions as a source of strength. I think so often people view their emotions as a source of weakness and it's not. Our emotions can be so powerful and can really strengthen us. So Amazonite helps us release any stagnant emotional energy um, that is, especially if it's blocking us from feeling that sense of spiritual connection. I think a lot of us are feeling a little withdrawn and disconnected from spirit right now, and we need to root into our connection to with our spirituality like more than ever when things are um, so difficult and so full of grief right now in the world. So with this crystal, you can help, you know, let go of the things that aren't serving you. It helps you stay more patient, uh, compassionate, full of self-love, um, and, and work through any of those shadow side issues that sort of come to the surface during Pisces season. Uh, my second pick of my top three, like I said, is Aqua Aura Quartz. It's a great emotional balancer. So especially coming out of Aquarius season, which can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster as well, this crystal helps you sort of regain control of the situation. It can mellow things out uh, as we move into Pisces season. And this isn't about dulling your feelings. Again, I said, you know, with that gold energy, it really helps us sort of stand in the power of our emotions. It's about choosing to feel things in a way that acknowledges your wholeness, that acknowledges your fullness, um, and that ultimately lifts you up and supports you and allows you to extend a hand to lift others up as well. So this is a really good one. And then my third top pick for uh, Pisces season is Laramar. Um, again, it, because it's known as dolphin stone, you can think of it as this crystal really helps you sort of ride the energetic um, and often emotionally challenging waters of life right now um, with a little bit more poise. And it's great for also enhancing intuition. So if you need a little guidance from the universe during this time that's really challenging, or you feel stuck in some way, reach for some Laramar and it can be a really big help. So those are some of my favorite crystals for Pisces season, but I also wanted to touch on Neptune, the ruling planet of Pisces. Uh, so each sign of the zodiac has a ruling planet, and this is the planet that um, is thought to have a particular influence over its corresponding zodiac sign, house, aspect of life, what have you. So Neptune is associated with mystical experience, with the unknown, with creativity, with uh, acknowledging or discovering hidden talents and gifts that you might have, um, but it can also be related to indecision. That can be challenging. Um, it is about unlimited potential, uh, which I think feeds into that indecision. Sometimes if we have too many options, it's hard to choose the best way forward. But it's also associated with dreams, sensitivity, artistic vision, exploration. Um, but we need to be careful because another trait of uh, Neptune is carelessness. So just sort of being aware of the energy that uh, Neptune, as the ruling planet of Pisces, is bringing into this season can help us avoid some pitfalls. So a lot of the crystals that connect with Neptune are ones that we already discussed that connect with um, Pisces season in general. So Amethyst, Aquamarine, Indigo, Gabbro, which again is also sometimes called Mystic Merlinite, and Black and White Pearl are all good stones for Neptune, in addition to Lepidolite, which is one of my personal favorite crystals. This is a gemmy Lepidolite, and so it has this beautiful, um, gorgeous mirror-like flash. So again, that 
inner work that we're doing, especially fueled by Neptune, um, is important. But look at the color. If I just light this up from the back, you can actually see it's super translucent. This is gorgeous. So this is a Gemi Lepidolite from Brazil. And so the Lepidolite really helps us connect to um, that idea of the unknown and tapping into the unknown, understanding what's coming forth for us out of that mystical experience. So a great companion for any type of divination work that you might want to do during this time that is ruled by Neptune to get some clarity on what's in store for you this season and what new energies are coming in. Um, but I also wanted to share a really practical little exercise that you can do. This is adapted from the um, Pisces moon exercise from my book Cosmic Crystals. So this is a little crystal ritual that you can do for Pisces season with your crystals. Uh, all you will need is um, a small dish. So I have this beautiful ceramic dish with these gorgeous little ammonites on it. Um, this is made by Wynn Abbott Ceramics. Love their work. Uh, but a little ceramic dish, a little glass dish, something like that that you can put some water in and then you'll need an amazonite stone if you don't have amazonite substitute whatever you intuitively feel called to work with one of those pisces season crystals i mentioned earlier uh, in this video would be an excellent choice um, so you're just going to need the small dish filled with a little bit of water your amazonite stone and that's it and yourself so you are basically going to create a little energy infused water with your amazonite and you're going to work with this water to cleanse any heavy emotions or heavy emotional energy and then refill your aura with energy and support and love from the universe um, and do a little deep breathing to anchor that all in so you can perform this mini crystal ritual anytime during pisces season again that's going to go from about february 20th through march 20th so just set a small dish of water in your sacred space and put your Amazonite stone into that dish of water, right into that dish of water. Um, and you're going to dip your finger into the water, the, the, which has been infused with the energy of the crystal, and you're going to sort of anoint your heart and your brow with that water, that crystal infused water. You can then close your eyes and then feel the energy of that crystallized water energizing those areas feel that crystal energy sort of coming into your aura into your energy body and take a really deep breath in nice big deep cleansing breath and as you exhale visualize releasing any stagnant or unwanted emotional energy um, anything that's you know not serving you especially if you're really really struggling with it so see the energy sort of moving toward that dish of water that has that crystal in it where it can be transmuted water is so cleansing so healing so powerful um, especially at this time of pisces season connected to the water element ruled by neptune so just sending that energy to the water to be transmuted and then just continue that process of breathing feeling those energy centers be energized through that crystal water and then letting go and releasing of anything that is no longer needed to that dish of water to be transmuted. So um, once you feel like everything is sort of on its way out, you can t visualize the Amazonite stone that's again in the dish gl glowing really brightly with energy. And on your next inhalation, see yourself breathe this light in. So that light is transmuting anything that has been released. We're gonna breathe that light in to fill our aura full of this positively charged energy, full of this universal light, this energy that is so healing, so grounding, so supportive, so nourishing. And then just take a few deep breaths in and out. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the present moment. So there's some great stuff for you over on the blog. And again, there's a link to this matching blog post article uh, in the video description here. And I would really encourage you to head over and check it out. 
because I've also given you, in addition to this little ritual, a few other things that you can do with your crystals. So if you have Pisces anywhere in your chart, in your birth chart, your natal chart, um, you may want to do my little exercise for your big three, which are your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. So you can do this no matter what, but especially if you have Pisces in your chart, you might want to check it out. I have an instructional video over on the blog, and you're basically going to create a little pouch for your big three, charge it up with energy, and I've included some correspondences for Pisces, so if Pisces is your sun in your sun sign um, area of your chart, then you can work with tiger iron or aquamarine. If Pisces is your moon sign, then you can work with black Ethiopian opal or silver sheen obsidian. And if Aquarius, or excuse me, and if Pisces is your rising sign, you can work with pink thulite or rose quartz. So these are super helpful. Um, so working with these crystals for your big three is super straightforward, super easy. There's a little how-to video over there. I've also included some affirmations, some extra little um, charts and graphics that will help you connect with these crystals during Pisces season. And I've created a little Pisces season card spread that you can do as well if you like to work with divinatory tools like tarot or oracle cards. So I hope that's helpful. I hope this will help you explore the really unique energies of Pisces season with these crystals, bringing in some more joy and communication into your life. Um, and I would love to know how it works out for you. If you've learned something helpful from this video, definitely please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Until I see you next time, many crystal blessings.